Today we're going to be looking at a channel called Science File the AI. Specifically this video here called All Physics in 6 Minutes. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. This video was heavily requested. Let's check it out. Hello mortals. Have you ever heard of the most complex subject? <laughs> Doing the Stephen Hawking voice. That's a good start. In the known universe. One which is still far from being understood. One which is the literal cause of everything. One which made high school students hate school. And most importantly, one that made Rick and Morty possible. By the name of the video. I mean, that's technically true. I mean, it made everything possible. That would include any sort of cartoon like Rick and Morty, so gotta give it to them. You probably know what I'm talking about. Gender studies. Seriously now, I mean, penguinologism. Now for real, today we're going to speak about chicken nugget science. Chicken nugget science, I mean, that's, I can get behind that. I'll just stop. The first branch of physics is the most boring one and the only one that you can observe by yourself. <laughs> oh come on, classical physics isn't that boring. But we'll see what he has to say. It says that objects will move if you kick them, and that if you punch somebody they will punch you back with the same force. <laughs> no matter how ugly Earth you punch are, in the moon. you still attract the entire universe towards yourself with a force inversely proportional to the distance. Inverse square law shows up a lot in physics. Next we have electromagnetism. Thanks to it, your phone works. Also thanks to it the universe can exist. It describes how electric and magnetic fields, which are in fact the same thing, work. Kind of, they're related. Um, electrics more, can be a bit more static and magnetic a bit more dynamic of a charge or an electron that's moving. But they are, they are connected, so that's why a lot of people typically string them together uh, as electromagnetic forces, but sure. Briefly it can be summarized as electrons and photons doing weird stuff. <laughs> then we have thermodynamics. Love the party hard. Which tries to explain why you shouldn't jump in lava. It also says that entropy tends to get higher, which will result in an inevitable death of the entire universe. If you want to hear a lot more about entropy, I highly recommend you check out my reaction video to Veritasium's video on entropy. It's pretty cool. Yes, uh, it, thermodynamics explains why you shouldn't jump in lock, but, or even be that close to it because of both conduction and convection. But yeah, thermodynamics comes up a lot in nuclear engineering. In fact, that's probably the bit that's used the most heavily, even more so than quantum, and when it comes to stuff on a day-to-day -day basis. Called the heat death. We also have fluid dynamics, an excruciatingly hard way of determining how aerodynamic a cow can be. <laughs> okay. That's good. Chaos theory tries... So fluid dynamics have often... In fact, there's a lot of... Uh, a lot of nuclear engineering, you kind of just combine the two together. Thermal hydraulics, which is thermodynamics plus fluid mechanics. Anything involving highly pressurized and hot systems, which include nuclear power plants. Yeah, a lot of nuclear engineering is the study of thermodynamics and fluid mechanics. Describe how your life would have been if you hadn't said that really stupid thing to your crush back then. <laughs> we also have optics, which pretty much... <laughs> That's a pretty good one. <laughs> Studies how light behaves when it passes through glass. The next big pillar of physics is relativity relatively speaking. There is this dude, one stone, who comes and says- <laughs> what, even, what even is this? <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> At light speed is constant. And then people asked, well what if I- Ah, uh, he's getting in the- he's- Specifically talking about light speed being constant in a vacuum, but you will actually see things go faster than light when it slows down in water. That blue glow, the Cherenkov radiation, that's what happens when you have particles that go faster than light through, through water. One faster than that? And one stone said, you can't because you're fat. <laughs> I'm not fat, you reeky ill-breeding maggot. Your mass is not zero. <laughs> this is dirty. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you are. Bitch. Also, Newton, your physics is shit. 
something about this delivery with the Stephen Hawking voice just, I don't know, it's this, it's like I'm expecting it, but I'm not expecting it at the same time. Uh, I don't know much to, what else to say about that, but it's, it's throwing me off. It's, it's weird. <laughs> Gravity is not a force. It is the curvature of space-time itself. Gravity not being a force. Now I think we're getting into some of the differences between physicists and engineers. Um, engineering, when you're building anything, a bridge, a office building, a nuclear power plant, you still refer to gravity as a force and how sound you make your structure so it can stand up to gravity, among, uh, among other things. So, space-time curvature, sure, but that's only really observable when you get things that are really, really big, like planet-sized, and I haven't really built anything that big yet. That'd be cool, though. Megastructures like a Dyson Sphere, but for all intents and purposes and day-to-day -day life of an engineer, including a nuclear engineer, it's a force. Next we have quantum mechanics. A weird field with zombie cats, infinite versions of you, and the core of Rick and Morty. What? Okay, I, I don't know much about Rick and Morty, so I have to fill in the blank on that from the zombie cats. Oh, man. The standard model says that there are at least 13 times. Okay, elementary particles, sure. Of particles. First we have fermions, six types of quarks and six types of leptons. Then we have four types of gauge bosons and one scalar boson. Gluons obviously make glue. <laughs> Not really. Interesting he's going into more detail about about this one. Photons make photon cannons. Ele <laughs> Is that from StarCraft? Uh, but yes, elementary particles, um, they're called that way because you can't subdivide them any further. Or at least we haven't figured that one out yet. Electrons of a lot of this various types of radiation, beta particles, electrons, gamma, gamma radiation, and photons. Photons, it's showing the symbol for gamma radiation, even though that covers the entire electromagnetic spectrum, but gammas are just those, but of really high energy. Electrons make electricity. The muon is basic. I mean, that's true. Electricity really just means the flow of electrons, so there you have it. Electrons overweight unstable sister. The tau is basically I mean they're they're bigger, yeah. <laughs> Electrons super ultra overweight sister. <laughs> it is also really suicidal and doesn't like to live for a long time. Okay, yeah, a lot of so a lot of these have very short uh half lives. Don't know the don't know the tau off the top of my head. That one doesn't really come up very often, but sure, short half life, got it. These guys like to pass through everything without interfering with anything. These guys are just boring. Ah, uh, neutrinos. Um, very small amount of interaction, technically a form of radiation, but you don't really consider it to be much since they don't really translate any energy to you. I do remember a really bad movie that talked about them mutating and somehow causing the events of what pe when people thought the world was going to end in 2012, but no, that's... Elementary particles don't mutate or, or, or decay. That's why they're called elementary particles, because they're, they're in their basic fundamental final state. They can be transformed into something. Uh, like, for instance, the photoelectric effect involves a photon being transformed into an electron. No, no mutations. You guys make up six flavors of chupa chups. They also make up protons and neutrons. The Higgs boson just makes you fat. It <laughs> gives you mass. <laughs> uh, bonus points for always showing a cat. Sure. Then there is the super string theory, which replaces all oh, the Lord. elementary particles with really small vibrating strings. Different particles, different vibrations. It also argues that there are 11 spatial dimensions instead of 3. It looks something like this. Good luck imagining that. Give you a sense of how small how small these strings are supposed to be, we're talking many billions of times smaller than even atomic nuclei, and even those elementary particles that he just showed in the quantum mechanics section. It's a weird one out there. Again, if you want to hear more about my reaction to string theory specifically, I'll link another video in the, 
I'll pin another comment down below. Next I highly suggest to first watch this video on quantum mechanics, otherwise you won't understand much. Too lazy to watch it? Good luck. I'm gonna roll the dice. This is all fairly meme physics anyway, so I'm not taking it too seriously, but it's funny. First we have the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. <laughs> there you go. Figured it was he was gonna bring up <laughs> Walter White. Which states that he is the one who knocks. There you go. Oh, no, never mind. It states that you cannot physically know both the position and the momentum of a quantum particle at- What's interesting is this principle kind of shows up in just classical mechanics. Like, think of, so position and momentum, or think, think of momentum as speed. But you throw a rock in a pond and you see the uh, waves. You try to calculate the wave speed, but they're kind of propagating going outward when you measure that. The position's a little weird, right? Because it's all kind of expanding outward. Or if you look at the position of where the wave was, it's still moving. The more we sit back and watch all of those waves and ripples, the peaks and troughs kind of filter out, the more we can say about its speed, but less about its position. On the contrary to that, when we focus in on just one of those things, uh, one each individual wave, the less we can say about its speed since we're losing sight of the whole picture. So, you could argue that Heisenberg's uncertainty principle can be applied to larger things as well. Same time. Then we have the Schrodinger's cat, which is both alive and dead <laughs> at the go. same time until observed. This works for all particles, which exist in all possible states as long as it doesn't interact with anything else. Yeah. Oh, also, when observed, the cat splits the universe in two, one with each version of the outcome. So a single atom can split the universe in countless ways. Just think of it as like a decision tree. That would be a really cool one to figure out though, the idea of superposition being in multiple spots at once. If you got good at taking particles from say somewhere else in the universe, couldn't you like form a ball of energy in your hand? You're just borrowing energy from something else? Good for thought. Therefore, creating a metric graph ton of parallel universes, according to the many worlds interpretation. Okay. Now seriously, go watch this video to understand what I just said. That's kind of going back to the whole uh, branching paths, making a decision, decided to do one thing, but you really did it in the many worlds theory. That would be kind of cool to uh, visualize the uh, which alternate reality you use as well as what you currently did. You could decide what's optimal, or you could just see them as all optimal and admire the many worlds for the beauty that they are. I think I forgot to mention antimatter, dark matter, black holes matter, <laughs> quantum gravity, <laughs> the Big Bang, the infinite universe that is somehow still expanding, the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> I think we went backwards a little bit after, after a few of those for the Pythagorean theorem. <laughs> because I only have five minutes, not several human lifetimes that are required to understand how the universe works. But you're a super AI, you can, you can pull this off. But this is totally enough to understand most of the physics memes. Which is nice. That's it. The whole thing was a prep guide for physics memes. It all makes sense now. This one was silly, but <laughs> that, that Stephen Hawking voice threw me off. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for this recommendation. I appreciate it. There's, let me know if you want me to uh, look at some of the other silliness on this channel as well. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.